Justin Mummy? Justin Mummy? I mean, it was one of the most eating stuff. Yeah, well, sulfuric acid or something. Yeah. Um, but, but, I mean, thousands and thousands of those big businesses of mummies were shipped to Europe oh. as to be ground into powder yeah. and dispensed you know, as, as medicine. That you know? is crazy. So there were loads and loads of money. I mean, any way you look, there were mummies. So it's not as though this was a, a rare prize right, to right. ship out. So. And that's what, what, that's why I got forgotten. Forgot. Yeah, it's undoubtedly why I got forgotten. You could probably fake a mummy pretty easily, too. What? You could fake a mummy pretty easily, too. Yeah, but why would you when they're all over the place? True. Yeah. This was in the 1800s? In the 1800s. And they, they said um, that that could be Ramesses the first. Oh, the one in Niagara? No, yeah, the one that's up there. That's And then Atlanta studied it for a long time did an in-depth study and then gifted it back to Egypt and it's in this museum. It's pretty fascinating. Oh, I heard that story, yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> what would have made them think it was Ramses I to begin with? I don't know why. It was pretty vague. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this museum is ma maintained today by the French? I mean, they did it, but they helped support it? I don't think so, no. no? I think, well, I, I don't think so. I mean, it was just... It wasn't built by, it was designed by French architects, as I understand it. Um, I'm not sure, but I think that that's the okay. case. It was built by the Egyptians, but somebody must have been watching over them very closely because they did a good job. They did it, <laughs> yes. No, seriously. Yeah, no, this is... You watch the guys working, the laborers working, doing stuff. You know, these are not craftsmen. No. They're, it's no. very, very decadent, degenerate stuff they do. I don't know how they even get the hotel. I mean, there's a watch over them with, like, hawks when they're doing things like bathrooms and... Yep. Because to get them to do anything. I mean, anyone who lives here knows that. It's, it's bad, you know, it's bad enough with, with us that you have contractors and things mm. who you can hold responsible. Got here, it's a nightmare. John, I have two questions. Mm -hmm. uh, that Akhenaten stuff is just... God awful. What are they? What are they? You don't think so? No. Oh, it's creepy. What are they? What are they? Did, did, was there? Uh, did they try and erase him after? Did you say they they did try to erase him. Oh, absolutely. They oh. did erase him, and, and that there's anything at all. A lot of I don't know where if these came out of the out of the pylon. I'm not talking about they were buried in the pylon just as Phil to get rid of them. No, their, their intention, whereas with Hatshepsut, sort it's of selective. They're leaving her works and they're leaving they're facing her, but her cod is allowed to be there. I mean, so it's, it's just, it's like a jail sentence. It's not a death warrant. And with, with Akhenaten, when, whenever he's referred to afterwards, it's always as the criminal Akhenaten. So he was, you know, he was in real apostate. And, uh, so they're after him, but why he looks like that, that's another matter. As I said, the John theory is John, I that click. It, it's his poet's... Click, click, click. Okay, that, that his, click, his, his, his own artists are sabotaging him, the way that, that Goya did the royal family of, of Spain. You know, making them look like gibbering idiots, and how he got away with it, I'll never know, because he, he really do it. They're doing everything but drooling. He's exceptional. There's nothing like him before and nothing, nothing like, like him after. after. No. He's a total and, exception. And, and to me, he's absolutely creepy. My other My question person. is, uh, the granite work is always, almost always spectacular. Yeah. The granite's hard, a lot harder to work than anything else, right? In this, uh, what, are, what are they, what are they, what are, is there, do they know how they work it? Or? They assume, they, I don't think they know, they assume that it's mostly... <laughs> I mean, just blocking it out to begin yeah. with is, seems yeah. impossible, and after that, it's, okay. it's abrasion, it's, you know, like hard corundum and cloth or whatever, and, you know, it's like sandpaper down. <laughs> but to get it, when you look at it, like if you look at, for example, at look one of the big ones, <coughs> and, okay, this side is, is weather, is corroded because it was lying that side down when they uncovered it. You look at the other side, which is perfect, and you, you, know, you shine a light up and you sight on it, 
experiencing a ripple on it. And, and sculptors look at that, sculptors, modern sculptors, stone sculptors, and that was a very good passage by a friend of mine who was a good stone sculptor, dead now, in the guidebook in the section on Memphis, because there's a big colossal figure of Ramses there. And we were visiting that, and he was talking about it, and I said, hey, Stuart, write me that, write that down to me. I don't want it in my words, I want it in your words. So he wrote it down, it's a very eloquent page, where he's talking about what goes into that kind of perfection in hard stone. And he's marveling things like, which you wouldn't think to look at, but like the crevices that nobody actually sees in the nostril and the inner ear. Like there's no fudging, nothing is left because, oh well, it doesn't matter. Every detail is seen to. But how they do, we don't know. Can you, can you cut I know when you're doing apartments, they cut it with, uh, you know, now with slabs. Diamond, with diamond leg. Where they have diamond leg. Well, we saw the place in, uh, in, the, in the Cairo Museum where it looks like it's a rotary something that's going askew. But what it is a rotary of, nobody knows and nobody's found what anything. What do they do say? You know, they, don't, they just don't address it. They, Patience and time. Patience and time. Yeah, they, do you think a lot of the granite work was older stuff? No. No, it's quite clear that, the, you know, that, just all that and they're doing it all along, right to the end. Uh, and they're, they're working you know, marvelous things in granite even in Ptolemaic times. We'll see when we go to Edfu tomorrow. It's incredible horrors. Today we don't know of anything except a diamond. Well, I mean, I mean, you know, what's the stuff? It's, it's got carburum and corundum. It's, it's something you grind it up into a powder, and it's not as hard as diamond, but it's not far off. But how did that many work with that? How many years you have to work with it in order to produce that kind of finish? Again, nobody knows. They simply just said, who was it? Just said, yeah, patience, patience and time, and you can do it. But that's not really an answer. The, the fact is that modern sculptors who are stone sculptors, which are not Egyptologists, say they can't imagine how they would do it. So why should the Egyptologists know any better than they not the ones who do the work? This it's one of innumerable mysteries um, that are big mysteries, sometimes enshrined in small objects like the, like the vase with the, with the narrow neck that's hollow inside. I mean, it's only a little vase, it's so big. Go figure. <clears throat> anyway, what did, what did you all think? Wait, where's my question? <laughs> I know where it is. Aha. <laughs> That's the question, actually, everyone. What did you think of in the, 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 the statues in the cachette there? Which, which, which really took your interest? Did you notice? Which were the ones that really hit? Inside? Yeah, inside there. Oh, the big one. The third, the red one. Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> what? The Hathor. Yeah, for me, yeah, yeah, well, I mean, they're all great, but for me, the Hathor and the, the Ionet, who must be a form of Hathor, the local goddess or something like that, for me, those are inconceivable. It's just hard to imagine that we can get that into a stone with, with that level of, of simplicity. I mean, it's, you know, compared to... Some of the, you know, the, the stuff from the Renaissance is marvelous, but it's very elaborate, and none of it has that quality. What? Which one was that, John? What? Which is the one you're talking about? The, the two, the two um, goddesses. One is Hathor, that's on that side, in a, in a black stone, and the other one facing her in a sort of a grayish granite oh. or something like that. I W N E T. I, or I, don't, I mean, that's the only instance of of a unit that I know of, but um, she must have had some some um, uh, you know, some sort of place in the in the local pantheon. It's just that to me that those are I mean they they evoke something that's almost inconceivable from from a work of art to me and and, and simply. Anyway, okay, let's wander through. You know, the kids have had their dose of Egypt and behaved rather well for kids. All things considered. You're right when you say about the level of detail between the sculpture and sculpture from 
say the Renaissance yeah. or even the Roman period, sure. which I've seen and I remember thinking to myself, oh my gosh, the level of detail with the togas and the folds yeah. and the fabric, it really looks and feels like fabric. Compared to this stuff, though, the level of detail here is incredible. I mean, way, way beyond what they were doing in the Renaissance yeah. and yeah. the Roman got period. And, and, got an eye. and done simply. I mean, the detail, and yet, it, it, whereas the, with the Roman stuff and even the Greek stuff, it looks like they, and in the Renaissance too, particularly when it gets into the Baroque and the Rococo, it looks like they're, they're showing off. Look how Bernini, people like that. Yes. Look, look how fancy I can be with <laughs> folds of linen. Right. Whereas with these, with this. it's a totally different way. Yeah, it's. it's and until you, you know, until you see it for yourself, well, right? you haven't seen it for yourself. It's a yeah. big difference. Anyway, let's wander over here. Let's start with Wudam and Hotep, and and this is this is one of those. I mean, this is a this is a massive head. And particularly this side, that side's a bit corroded because it was lying side down in the mud. But if you look at it, if you look at this side and you know sight, you know catch the, the light on the on the features. I mean, almost it almost doesn't look possible. I mean, things like look at this here, the tail here of the brow, the eyebrow, and then the little ridge above it. Without that little ridge above it, it wouldn't be the same. And yet. There it is, and everything, there isn't a ripple in it. It's, it, seemed, yeah, it didn't seem as though you could cast something and get it as, and get it as, as flawless as that. And yet there it is. I was telling just a couple of people, I forget who it was, of my friends, everyone wasn't listening, of a good friend of mine who was a stone sculptor, <clears throat> and we were in Memphis, where I don't bother to go anymore because there's not that much there, but there's a big colossus of Ramses II, Ramses the Great, and he was marveling at this colossus, a really big one, you know, like similar size as in Luxor Temple. And he was looking down the, the arm or looking down the leg, and, and he was just enthusing about this. And he was a good stone sculptor himself, and he was saying, you know, with machine tools, you couldn't get that kind of precision. And I said to him, uh, you know, that's Stuart, you write that down, because if I, if I write it in my words, that's not your words and you're the sculptor, so he did. It's a good page, and you probably haven't seen it in the guidebook because it's about Memphis, and we don't go to Memphis, so the chances are you didn't read the passage on Memphis, but read it. It's very eloquent from a guy who was a real stone sculptor, not an Egyptologist, you know, who doesn't, you know, who's never cut a rock in his life. You know? those, are the, those are the opinions that count, in my view. Anyway, you can imagine this, this would have been a pretty majestic statue when when full size. Okay, let's, and this is all over here, this Meruot, is a, a form of Hathor, and this is another absolute masterpiece. <coughs> the heat, yeah, it comes the oh yeah, let's start with a wedding. Because um, usually she's so near, of course, when it's Hathor, she has her own face, and the ears, the cow ears, but this is in full cow form. And there you can see the little eggs in her ears yeah. right, very clearly. And oh, really? yeah, yeah, take a look. Okay. Um. This is a cool room last night. See the little eggs? Yeah, I mean, you know, we don't have those in our ears because fortunately our ears are not ovaries, otherwise we might get in little trouble. <laughs> well, you've heard of people, you know, pregnant speech, so you've got to be careful. <laughs> anyway, this is, this is, this is spectacular. I'm wondering if this is um, what Moses found the people worshiping the golden calf when he came down from uh, well, receiving the tablets. It might. It, it might be. There's also a. Um, the, the, there's a, there's a, another interpretation which people come out that they're they're still worshiping Taurus, age of Taurus, mm -hmm. and but 
all of that's conjecture, but it could be something of this sort. I mean, basically, I think what, what the little message of that particular passage is that you're not supposed to worship idols, as they say, um, which is a misunderstanding of what the idols were doing. That this got corrupted later on, actually. I think Juvenal, the, the uh, Roman satirist who talked about demented Egypt worshipping animals, well, by that time, they were. I mean, um, you know, with the mum- mummifying thousands and thousands of cats and ibises and all of that sort of stuff. That's degenerate, but the original, the original impetus is not degenerate. So let us continue. <coughs> This is our squatting scribe. We've seen that a number of times. But oh, this is over here. This is uh, which one is this? Senuset and Wasret, one of one of the Middle Kingdom pharaohs. And I don't remember if I mentioned this when we were going through the museum, the Cairo Museum. But in the Middle Kingdom, for reasons of their own, they became much much more realistic in a certain way. I mean, normally in classical Egyptian. The pharaoh was always shown out of in the prime of life with the serene expression on his face. Um, prime of life, of course, being 82, really. Um, <laughs> even though he doesn't look that old, um, usually. But in the Middle Kingdom, they, and this is a guy with real care, you know, the, the burdens of empire written into his face. And with those strange exaggerated ears, they certainly knew uh, the proportions in those days, so the exaggerated ears have to be there for some reason or another. And this is just, this guy walked into the museum right now, you'd recognize him in an instant, very, individu- very individualized. The others are individualized in their own way too. It's in Ptolemaic times, you can't tell one from the other. But otherwise, I mean, Ramses is Ramses, and Seti is his, his father. Tutmos. You see the um, Tutmosis and, and, and Hatshepsut. You see the family resemblance, so that they're, they're individualized, but not to this extent. And over here, there's another one over here. Where is he? That's of no vast consequence. But this, and his features are really of, different from the others. That's right, very. And this one different again. Look, he definitely doesn't like being Pharaoh. No. <laughs> no. He, he, <laughs> Seriously unhappy with the job. It's funny because it's the same pharaoh as the the one depicted on the big head sculpture. I'm an old no. no, no, this is this is this is no. Oh, this is Amenemhat. Amenemhat. That's yeah. Middle Kingdom. Yeah. He actually has bags on his nose. Oh, poor guy. Yeah, he looks he looks mad. He looks he looks yeah. <laughs> Who needs this job? He says. What does the old thing? Take this job and shove it. There was always fun. <laughs> I was, go- I was going around a few years back. Was it a song or something? Was it a song? Yeah, who was it? Paycheck. Paycheck. Nothing of vast, nothing like the Tutmosis. This, is the, this the is the one I was telling you about. Yeah, this is the Tutmosis. I've seen it all over the Yeah, pictures. This, this is another absolutely total masterpiece. This is this is this is um, Sohaila's fantasy lover, <laughs> and it's funny actually because they they call him always, you know, the Napoleon of Egypt. But really, hard, that's hardly of the facial features of Napoleon. But really, truly, he did carve out the empire, and it's the face of, you know, it's the face of a poet, not of a. Mm. Not of a not of a conqueror, or what you associate normally with artistic, creative sensitivity, rather than, you know, a George Patton or somebody well, like I that. Describe it as youthful and confident. Right? That's Who, what the sign says. Uh, does it? Yeah, that is a little little bit smile. Well, he just murdered a whole bunch of people and took over a country. <laughs> You'd smirk too. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when you're younger, you know, you yeah, don't know any know, better. That's right. Got 60 lines, 20, 20, 20. <laughs> now this one over here, this is of of, of Amhotep the the third and Sobek, the crocodile who represents you know death as a as a cosmic and solar principle. 
And on Hook I've had a strange and I see if anyone has a bit of paper on it. This connection with um, with Sobek, and in fact, we didn't go on the road yesterday. Why we didn't? That leads past. Well, we're going to the Valley of the Kings. There's a the busy excavating what little is left of the mortuary temple of Amenhotep, and there is on the side. This, this connection with Sobek um, reflected in a sphinx that's a regular sphinx with a you know with a with a head with a human head, but a crocodile tail. This is absolutely which is unique as far as I know. And here he is, you know, under the protection of Sobek, who is death is a cosmic principle, in a what does it say? It's it's an alabaster, calcite. but it's a kind of alabaster. No, what is calcite. it called? A calcite, yeah, which is Where's where's our resident geologist here? There. Where did what they find it? it? Was it was it safe? Safe? Wandering around. I'm sorry, I don't know. I'll go back and get your PhD. It's the same environment. Yeah. Okay. There might be a furnace difference. Good. Well, now I know. Something. Yeah. Yeah, but it's the same. Okay. Anyway, this is this is this is a pretty elegant piece of stuff. But look, they should could have. Not really, because look, they have a snout separate as a separate. They should do it out of one piece. If I were not on the hotel, I'd complain. So I get a bigger piece of calcite so that my nose, it, so that it isn't actually a nose job. I want, I want my nose to be integral. So, it looks like a repair, really. Hmm? It looks like a repair because it's not continuous. Oh, maybe. That's yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a repair. A repair? Yeah. 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 Ah. So there. So there, I stand corrected. Yeah, you don't have to worry what does about it, it. What does it mean where, you, where they had the fingers around the other side? Like his arm comes around him and you can see oh, you notice that his arm comes around. Yeah, well, he's, he's, I mean, he's got his arm around his shoulder. As, you know, it's a sign of not an embrace, but as a you know, support, protection, all the rest. And we didn't see it in uh, Luxor. You see it there, too, because everything was scaffolding and dark within, in the and the the, the part that where the colonnade is, where the festival, yeah. the festival is shown, and there you have this. I mean, this neat in, uh, attention to detail. Yeah. He's got his arm around him, and there you see his arm around. Him. Well, really human. It does. It absolutely human. And I was noticing yes. on some of these, you can see the cuticle. I mean, right. you can see the cuticle. Mm. Really yeah, well, this was detail. That's right. Well, this was what my friend Stuart, the sculptor, was talking about. That, you know, that normally. As the, the crevices are as finely finished as the, the the space between the hands, the toes. And there's a little space there because they wear thong sandals all the time. So you develop a, a, a space between your toes. I mean, all these kinds of unbelievable details. And you know, and when it, when it gets and it gets corrupted in Ptolemaic times, they don't do this this way anymore. It's amazing. There was something ah. attached to it. In those holes. Oh, under the well, under the I don't, good point. I don't know. I do not know. Very good. Very good. Point. Who knows? I wouldn't. Wouldn't accept that's where the there. that's where the darts shot out of there and killed yeah. people trying to <laughs> come into the, <laughs> trying to raid the tomb. Yeah, that was. Yeah, I've seen too many movies. Don't bend your finger in front. Keep going. Over here, this guy up here offered for us to take pictures. Where's that? This guy right there. Oh, really? He's a guard. Oh, where's the highlight? She that's was this way with a cell phone. What? She's with oh, cell let's, phone. let's ask her and see what she says. She says, so it's okay, it's okay. Hold on a second. Well, you now know about block statues because we saw the one at the Cairo Museum with, with uh, Sen and Muth. And this is about the most trend. Sahila. Yeah. Look, one minute. I think the rest of them, there are many. Look, one is coming. Let's just go on.
Yeah, you do not want to run afoul of these guys. You want to be sure, but you are sure. Isn't it? I like the touch of gold on his uh, cobra. Mm. Yeah, this is. And that was when he was younger. Even. Yeah, but this is, you know, this is. A, I would like to. I mean, if someone gave me this statue, I would be pleased to accept it. But it's, <laughs> it's not of the same order as the other one. Which same one? Same place as that. Don't take mine. One. Yours. As, no, no, you don't take mine. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's also very nice. That's pretty good. Yeah. yeah, that's him when he was younger. You see how they really can uh, 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 realize the, the age easily. Yeah. And then, of course, you see the, the touch of gold on the cobra. Yeah? Mm -hmm. See the yellow? It's gold. Yeah. He matured a little bit. <laughs> This is this is another of those neat chariots, and it was actually it was this one. Who was it was saying they saw it? There was a I think maybe it was John Oliver. There was a, a documentary somewhere recently where they were reconstructing one of these. Right? Where did we see it? Was it BBC or something? What? I don't remember. I saw it on YouTube. But it was it was, it was well done. I think it was. Maybe I thought it was National Geographic. Oh yeah, might it was one of those guys. Yeah. Incredibly sophisticated structure. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And and it was just this one for whatever reason because I've you know I've seen a million others in, in certain common galleries where I thought God they should bring back chariot racing. I mean that would really be that would be a big draw. I mean you could you could pull a lot of people in for the World Cup in chariot racing. That would be fun. Should be shot that this, this bend. Yeah. It's incredibly structural. What it does is it keeps the whole thing flat. That, right, really? It what, the, 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 then, the that goes down? Yeah, I see. But the whole thing of your allows it to. Yeah, to flex. It's like this. Right, right, right. Right. <clears throat> yeah, I remember watching that or a part of that, and it was really fascinating. The other thing he discovered is the spokes, yeah. when he made them solid, weren't that strong. Uh -huh. So he split them in half. Uh -huh. Half of it goes, it's continuous, half of it goes in the hub this way, half goes that way. Wow. And then they, you can see it here, they're split right down the middle. There's two pieces for each spoke. And I believe, yeah. and I believe. Wow. Well, I thought that was just due to cracking. Yeah. That's, that's the yeah, they, 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 they were built that way. No, I don't. And I believe and that. It goes into the hub like this. It's, it's not just sticking. It's like the hub is formed inside of that wrapping with the spoke. It's an wow. incredibly sophisticated structure. And I read somewhere that there were some of the wheels here, this is clearly wood, you know, put together rather elaborately. But I read elsewhere that it's laminated leather, the wheels, and hardened, which makes it, would make it very strong. Anyway, it was, Zahi was still in office. I was waiting for the opportunity to put that to him to say, because he liked that. One, he'd love to be driving the chariot. And two, it would be, it would really be, yeah, it would, it would put it on the map. It should be an Olympic sport again. I mean, who needs luge, for Christ's sake, you know, and curling as an Olympic sport? I mean, curling, something girls do with their hair. I mean. This is the great grandfather of all Egyptians. Oh yeah, did everyone go in there? Egypt. Okay. He's the one who yeah. drove the Hyksos, the first people who were uh, in yeah. Egypt. Mm -hmm. For the fly uh, necklace. Is that there? Yes. Awesome. Awesome. This is awesome. Uh, that was on loan. Is it on this mummy or in, in this? Hey. Well, in both. Oh, yeah. well, you see, like they've been away for years. It was on loan. No, oh, really? Great. It's the most I dedicated. Yes. Yeah. One more. <laughs> I love this fly. 
Listen to me. If you get us a reproduction of this, <laughs> no, of this, the fly, we will fly. We will fly. Okay, there are. Somebody will do it. Yeah, I've they, seen they them. Yes, yes, but I not this them. size. Not no, this no, size. No, that's that's huge. Much. Yeah, that's the, big, well, they, they, I just saw them. I see them. They yeah. started to reproduce them, but a fly. Then you get the cord from anywhere. I would like the fly. Yeah, yeah. They make them in silver and in gold, actually. Who was it that makes them? Was it Karnak? Uh, Karnak, and I've right? seen them in... Um, I've seen them somewhere, too. I think maybe Fawi has sure. them. Fawi. Oh, maybe. Maybe. Anyway, Fawi. I don't know about I've seen them. Wow. I can... Nice if I do, choice. Yeah. Listen, it, yeah. I love them. And uh, there was one that I died for, and a guy took it one day before I went oh. to collect. Oh, wow. Same terrible story. And it was made in the... The, the, the top was in faience blue, mm -hmm. and the wings in gold. You know, yeah. the competition? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It was uh, this uh, size. Mm -hmm. I, maybe I called the guy if maybe he has one. Yes, or two. Well, <laughs> yeah, but yeah. we can find them. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll have a quest for them. I want a mosquito. I don't want to fly. <laughs> <laughs> Did I give you one once? I think I gave you one, a uh, silver one. Anyway, so here's the mummy. I don't, I'm against displaying mummies. Mm -hmm. So, John, you notice in the, in the carriage, there's the technique used by some uh, the ocean maker, furniture maker. Who's that? Uh, Tonet, T H O N E T, Tonet. Yeah, Tonet. In Austria, uh, 18, 1890. Yeah, Tonet. Yeah. Well, so, so they say this comes a way to, to bend uh, the uh, wood, the wood, etc., mm -hmm. and then use uh, pay extra um, to, to tie it. Tie it together. Right. Yeah, you might think those chairs very, very famous. Yeah. From the and this comes directly from here, from this same design. Yeah, but he probably reinvented it himself because these are the chariots of Tutankhamun. They weren't discovered until 1922. And See, so other chariots earlier. So that, that's a that's an interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. But you know how our deco style peak up to they they discovered Tutankhamun. And that, that the fighting stick is very like the bokken that they use in Japanese. Yeah, 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 yeah. In Aikido and right. the other arts. And the, the axe, actually, is, I mean, that's the symbol and why it is, I'm not sure. That's the symbol for gods. You know, you see the net there. We haven't really pointed out, but that's an axe or a triple axe, which means the god the principal so-and-so, and there has to be some very good reason why they're using that for that symbol and not some other, but I don't know what it is. Is it? Really? Yeah, this axe technology is very widespread. Really? Because there are a lot of ways to do an axe, and you don't have, doesn't have to be that one. With the half like that? You know, they, do, they show them the symbols without the handle. Oh, I see. Right. Because the handle, well, see, that's a different handle on that one, actually. That one is more sort of a splitting axe and... Duck bill shape. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would hate to go into battle with this sort of like one inch blade. Mm -hmm. it's sort of like... Which one? This, this wooden one here in the center. It's like... I'm going to hit the like guy this a bunch one? of, you know, up above. That, this one, yeah. That one? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm going to hit the guy a bunch of times and make him mad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't know. If you got some leverage behind it, you Yeah, yeah, there. yeah. That may be a point, right, for a spear, you think? With the holes there, but it's, it's, it's the same blade strapped. that's on E. It's, it's going to be strapped onto something, right? I think it's the same as the one above it. Oh, it's maybe. Have, it doesn't have a pole. It doesn't have a pole, right. Right, right. This is another story, though. It's this one. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's, that's serious stuff. That's it. Yeah. Oh, and here, actually, I didn't even notice this before. There's the so-called ostracons, where these are practice stones, and they're... The, the artist is doing a rough on this, as it were, like a blueprint to get everything right, and then he'll transfer it to a, you know, to a relief, to a wall. And so they have lots of these. Yeah, they have one upstairs. It's amazing. Yeah, there's one upstairs. Oh, the temple. It's a sling. Hmm? Is it a sling? Oh yeah. It must be. Hmm? David sling, the original. What is it? N. Yeah, slingshot. 
the tomb of Tutankhamun. I wonder how they grabbed that stuff. I guess they, the, the antiquities department gave them some Tutankhamun stuff so that they'd have it here. There's a bunch of stairs. Mm -hmm. The Tutankhamun stuff? Is that what was up there? Oh, really? Okay, let us continue. <laughs> There's some cool stuff here. Yeah, this is... Somebody must have got a nice reward, the quarry master, when he brought, when he brought this, yeah. this uh, piece of black granite. Gray granite. Gray granite. That has a <coughs> red granite top. With a vein in it of some place. How of vein. wonderful. Well? Yeah. yeah. This is a different. Wow. Mm -hmm. It's natural. Like no, that. It's, it's natural. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it would have a little more of potassium feldspar in it. Mm -hmm. Like the magma chamber probably, it probably broke off the wall mm -hmm. and got mixed in with the black stuff and then yeah. it on the edges. So, yeah, that must have been a good day at the quarry. <laughs> <laughs> it turned, it turned up. <laughs> and over here. What about the articulated panel? Which, which one? What? The, <coughs> what do I have? The hands the, are articulated. Oh! I never noticed that. Is that, is that going to move or is They're tied with the rope. Yeah, here yeah, they've got it. Here they've got it tied with, with the rope. rope. Got to be original. Yes. I don't know. Of you can see it better here, on this side. <coughs> yeah, but it's not going to, it's not going to swing. It's not going to articulate, is it? No, it's not going to go. It looks like, because it has But it won't. Because because it won't, it's attached here. It's flat, here. Oh. So it's flat, so, huh? so it can't flex. Right. But the material is covered here. It says on the sign back here, this is all the restoration. I guess, yeah, a lot of it. I guess it's attached because this, it's not, it's it's not strong it's enough to hold it. Maybe, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's good. Yeah, I've never noticed that before. I've only seen it. Well, it's done. <laughs> Actually, I don't like it that too much. I wouldn't look at it. It's, not, it's very simple. There's something wrong with it. The proportions aren't quite right. It's, I don't know. It doesn't have one life to it. Highly reconstructed. There's ah, the whole story okay. on it right there, the castle. Ah. I never read. Oh, that's Seti the First. Yeah. I didn't know that. Egyptian alabaster. Oh, all right. I never even noticed this. Oh, they had him pinned together a long okay. time ago, like a repair. Yeah, the casting is off a little bit. So ah. That's why he's... Oh, reassembled in the early 1900s. New reconstructed Osiris has recently been carried out, correcting a previous restoration. Okay, good. Over here. Read it, read it, read it again. He's the commander of a fortress under Ramses II, but his costume, I mean, this looks very un-Egyptian. It looks more Babylonian or more Far Eastern with this, you know, incredible, elaborated, yeah, I mean, this is, I can't think of another statue in Egypt like this, with this, this fluting here and this vein, and the, the headdress is different, the standard is unusual, everything about it, good fashion, terrific stature, but it's, it's gorgeous. It's quite unique, and uh, to the best of my knowledge, and yeah, it is gorgeous. And with a ring, too. Never seen that. Which one? It's a ring. It's a ring, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. 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 Yeah. All together, strange and wonderful stature. This one down here. Very tall. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a brilliant feather too, isn't it? Look at that, the way the feathers curves around. What's who is this? Nachmin. Scribes unknown. Royal scribe. Oh, that's why the feather's there, I guess. That's why the feather, because he's writing with a, with a feather to write with. He's a scribe. But I mean, look at look at that feather. The bird itself couldn't produce a better feather than that. <laughs> <laughs> and Mama Bird looked at that feather and she said, oh, yes, take that. <laughs> and here, yeah, this is cool. It's a proud people. That's, yeah, that's great.
Okay, so here, who is this here? Okay, Ramsey 6, okay, from the room we were in. And, I mean, in Ramsey 6, six times, they're not really winning many battles, but one of the areas cat with the enemy by his top knot, and down below, I mean, there's out of you know, the proportions are not, you know, realistic, they, they often are not, but the, the lion is there, his, his, his war lion, and actually rather artfully done with his tail wrapped around the, around the, the, the leg of the captured enemy, but it raises the question that what you see in Egypt is what you get, and that they actually had trained lions to go into war with. Ah. The lion is a pretty trainable cat. You know, I can't imagine a trained panther or a trained jaguar, but a trained lion, you could. And I must say, if I were an enemy of yeah. the king and have there all my spears and arrows there, and the king comes at me in his chariot with his war lion running along, <laughs> yeah. I would think twice about it. I would think twice How about it. Is that? <laughs> and here you see, if, ever, if you ever capture an enemy and you want to keep them immobilized, oh. here's, here's how you do it. <laughs> this is a, he's actually, he's, some people think he's meditating, but <laughs> really he's not. So, that's pretty graphic actually. Again, what you see is what you got. So, I'm sure that's exactly what they did. Okay, let's go up to the segment of segments. Actually, the segment of this morning was the, from my point of view, the best segment. And the more, more segment than anything else. The one up here is the Sekhmet of Sekhmet. This is no fooling around Sekhmet. But did you notice, by the way, this morning, that I didn't get to talk about it, and I don't like to talk about it immediately after we come out of there, because everybody's pretty spacey. Did you all get something really potent from that morning session? I'd like to spend, you know, have a 45-minute thing in there, but we never able to box sheesh that a stupid French company get doing whatever restoration they're doing around there, so we can't have it. But did you notice that one is unique? There aren't that many standing Sekhmets to begin with. There's some, but she's, I mean, she's, as I said, she's the female aspect of the fire principle. So she's active. And in real life, that's, it is the female with the line Pataz and in mummy wrappings holding the emblems of power. So he thinks, but he doesn't act. He's got all those emblems of power. He, he designs, but he doesn't create. And it's Sekhmet who does all of the all of the action. And in real life, I've mentioned this before, the male lion doesn't do anything. I mean, he doesn't hunt. He basically, his job is to keep the other lions, male lions, off his ladies. And it's, it's, the, it's the lioness who does all of the hunting, all of the nurture, all of everything. <clears throat> so she's active. And in Egypt, she's sometimes so active that on occasion there's a place in Karnak where you see where she actually is a segment, no doubt, with an erect phallus. But in the statue we saw today, did you notice she's holding a papyrus stalk. But where is she holding it? As though it were a phallus. So, I mean, that's her, in other words, that's his, she's activating organic life, you might, you might say. And that's, a, as far as I know, a unique segment with with that papyrus stuff like that. And she's often wearing, here you don't see it, and the segment today, um, it was there, but nobody wasn't calling attention to it. She, had, she often has a sun disc on her head that is not a disc, it's, a, it's an oval. Yeah, there, there you see more of it. It's, 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 so, it's an oval. <laughs> yeah, but I wasn't calling attention to it as though it's an orbit rather than a sun disk or something of that sort because they're perfectly capable of doing a perfectly round sun disk and they often do but with Sekhmet she wears this this uh, 
oval one. So another something that a bright young student can research out and figure out for himself or herself. She doesn't look very bloodthirsty in these. Well, because she drank all she, she, when she had a good meal, she She's doesn't. Satisfied. She doesn't because she curves. I see. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, more great uh, um, block statues. I'm going to host after the scribe again who we saw in the uh, Cairo Museum. <clears throat> Nothing else of fantastic interesting here. Oh yeah, this one actually, this is, this is a masterful little uh, statue here in wood. This is quite brilliant. This is this is brilliant. Who is it? Check it. Check it. You like the intellectual? Hi. Ebony. Ebony. It is. Look at the the necklace. And the dress. Royal Scribe. I, I saw him. You know his face. But that's, yes. that's elegant, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Lovely. And over here, the, uh, the Ostraka, the, the, the blueprints. Actually, there's a plan of, well, I'm not sure what temple it is, tomb. Okay. Sketch plan of oh, the tomb of Ramsey the, the Ninth. That's kind of cool. Did anybody go into that Ramsey the Ninth? Yeah, we went there. Yeah, that's, that's, the, that's the long one. Yeah, we went in there. Upstairs and then down here. Yeah. Up here over the road. No, it's all the way down the down there. What? Yeah. A plan? Yeah. That's a blueprint. Yeah. Blueprint. Well, you don't draw them on stones like that? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you didn't, you didn't see this one? John, if you're coming in through. Yeah, there's a blueprint. Yeah, I thought it was like a model. Like, no, well, this yeah, is the Xerox cool. one. This isn't the real one. Well, that's not the original. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cool. Uh, I, I don't know what we call this. We don't do this, but see, it's got both the vertical and the horizontal. Where's that? The door is laid down. Where? Show me. Or are these stairs? Are those the doorways? These are the that, doorways, yeah. So, so they're laid down. Right, right. At the same scale. Yeah, rather than in so it's, like it's, a, it's a plan and an elevation at the same, at the same time. time. Ah. do that. This is kind of interesting. Okay. Well, now you can introduce something new to your art. <laughs> How about that? Yeah. Yeah, so these are, these are cool. There's something else. And over here, when the Masons talk about, you know, their, that their, their tradition is rooted in Egypt, um, you know, maybe, because these are, these, are, these are the Egyptian measuring instruments, the, uh, the, uh, the square over there with the plumb bob. All of this is Masonic. I think they use this one as well, the plumb bob for the verticals. And that's the cubit stick there with lots of stuff on cubits. And another square, and the stuff on cubits, highly recommended. Even though I disagree with the conclusion of that of Egypt pyramid code revealed um, video documentary, because they go into a lot of this, a lot of the uh, the work on the the um, ge geodesical, the geodetic rather the geodetic complexity of that's involved in the uh, in the cubit. Very very interesting actually. Okay, let's go back down. If you go to any graveyard, you'll see, and, and there's a mason buried there. Yeah. You'll see these on their tombstones. Oh, really? Do you? The, yeah. the symbol of yeah. modern ah, still modern masonry. Yeah. Yeah. This, like a, the, the question. The question is, I, you know, I often have masons, and I know some masons. And the question is, you know, usually when you go to a masonic lodge, it's a bunch of old guys who are getting away from their wives for the night. <laughs> but uh, you wonder if they. If really at the higher levels, if they really are, they really know what they're they doing they there. A certain ritual that they go through, <coughs> which is sort of Egyptian-like, it, but it's not inner work. It's not the same thing. You're going through a ritual is not doing inner work, actually. It doesn't have to. I mean, you can do it without doing the inner work. So I always wonder, and I don't know, because I know some pretty high-up masons, but um, they, they don't... I don't question them, and they don't reveal, so I'm not sure. Some cool stuff here. <clears throat> yeah. 
you know, so when they're working in miniature sometimes, it, it's really interesting because they work, they work very small. What, is, what does it say that these, these are, are these ba toys? Are the baboons? Yes. Are these baboons? And where, yeah, we those, saw, where, we saw those are baboons. Yeah, are those baboons? Yes. Yeah, we, yes, yeah. we saw those in Randy's sixth tomb. Uh-huh. Yeah. Tin soldiers. They are like tin soldiers, but neat little, little, it's like bronze, isn't it? Bronze Horus? That one? Isn't that a bronze? Is that it a bronze? Looks like, Those are stone. It looks like bronze. It's kind of green. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, John, yeah. I have a question. This is Isis with the little Horus, right there, right? Yes, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. that will be. Yes. And then there are many, many interpretations of, uh, many, many figures of that one. Mm -hmm. The Isis with the little Horus. Right. Do you think in your understanding of all this ancient Egypt, that I know the, the, the Christians, they try to, to say that this is Christ and this is Mary. Yes. I mean, to get in control of the country in the time they were here. But do you really think, that in your experience, that Isis is Mary and Horus is Christ? Yeah. Yeah, it becomes so. I mean, why they, at what point the name changes, but it's the role played by Horus in the return to the light is formal, and the role played by by Isis in in conceiving uh, in conceiving Horus is formal. I mean, she impregnates herself on the upright phallus of, but this is a symbolic act. It's not a real phallus, and it's and she's not a. Re I mean, she's not. She's a. She's a falcon. She's a bird. And so it's all—it's—it's it's a spiritual teaching that the church turns into a historical fact, as if it were a fact. And I mean, even this present pope, who seems like, as popes go, a pretty decent guy, um, insists upon those aspects of Christianity as factual, as if he had any evidence, or you know, because it says so in the in the New Testament, that it's, she's a virgin. She's a virgin in Egypt as well. No, 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 that's, that's clear. It's, but if you think they are the same energies, Isis is the same energy as Mary, and Horus is the same. Principles. Mm -hmm. No, same principle, yes, but the same the energy. energy. You think they are the same? Yeah, I do, I really. I mean, again, yes, I, I absolutely think so. And even, I mean, so much of the iconography of Egypt is carried down through the church all of those years. I mean, how many Renaissance Madonnas have you seen exactly like that, with, with, with Mary and the infant Jesus on her, on her lap? And the infant Jesus is always portrayed as he is actually in Egypt, which is not as a baby. They're perfectly capable of doing, of sculpting a baby. He's, he's done as a little man who often looks sort of weird because he looks old. <laughs> and in the Renaissance, they, they, they were still doing that. Baby Jesuses didn't occur till Victorian chocolate boxes and stuff like that. Plus, you have the Black Madonnas as well. Well, you have the Black Madonna as well, is it true? So, yeah, I really do think that, that they're the same energies. I mean, in particularly, <coughs> look, this, look all, of the, all of the... It's funny because Catholicism and, uh, to a lesser extent, the Greek, the Greek Orthodox Church are really patriarchal. I mean, there's a real woman hatred going on there, yet the great cathedrals are all dedicated to the Virgin. So it's a weird schizophrenic doctrine that's being practiced there, because it really is anti-woman and anti-sex and all the rest of it, and yet the greatest architecture of the last 2,000 years is consecrated to the Virgin. And, you know, the, they're talking about Notre Dame all the time, which is more than a football team. So, um, yeah, it's, you've got to talk to your friendly, enlightened local Jesuit to, to get a, maybe get a better fix on it than I can get because you know, there's no, because the, the, the Jesuits know stuff. I mean, they, some of those guys are really practicing, and we're like, we don't do it on this trip. But on the, on the Enneagram trip that I do, we do it because there, there I have, it's different. You know, each group is different and has a different focus. And, but there's a monastery called San Macarios on the way, to about, two, about halfway to Alexandria, yeah. that they reconstituted starting about 40 years ago. Some Coptic professor of philosophy had a, saw a vision that he was supposed to uh, revive this monastery, which is 
very, very old. The oldest part goes back to, I think, the fifth or sixth centuries. And he, because of his academic position, he started attracting people. And they had, now there's a lot of stuff built up on the Alexandria Road. But 25 years ago, when I started doing the trip, it was the only thing in the midst of total desert. And they were really making the desert bloom. And you just walked in there, and there were all these guys wearing their black habits and things like that. But it's quite clear that they're doing the work. They're lit from within. They're lit up. And other monasteries, there's one we went to, of St. Anthony Monastery, it's very near the, uh, near the Red Sea. And it's very interesting, and the building and the structure is, is interesting, and the monks are very nice and friendly, but they're not, they're not doing the work you can tell. Mm. <laughs> you can tell. So there's all along, I mean, I'm convinced that the church survived because you wonder with all of this inquisition behind it and all the horrible shit that they're doing back in the third and fourth century and they're arguing over the trinity and you know murdering each other when they're not being murdered by the romans how the damn thing managed to survive and i think it's because a tiny little percentage of them were actually being christians and they managed to somehow or another perpetuate this otherwise mostly horrific institution over the, over the course of 2,000 years. Anyway, that's the John theory. I wouldn't try to defend it in the court. I wouldn't try to defend anything in a court, given the nature of the judges and the lawyers. Anyway. You better not. Okay, that's, there's nothing special here. Let's go down and up into the Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. No, that's the one that I'm thinking. Remember the girl, the girl with the. Yes. Who, do you remember? Yeah. Do you remember when we were at the oh, museum yeah. and there was this oh, yes. smiley yes. little girl yes. with the with yeah. the teeth with the teeth? And I said, she how the Egyptian she looked. She really looked like that. That's the I wonder if she'd like that. <laughs> I wonder if she'd like that. She might. Because mm. she must be. Does she work for the museum? Yeah. You think or is just. For the, uh, for the yeah, I know, but do you think she's done any Egyptology training no. to do that? No, no, I don't think so. But she, I mean, that was really, she looked like that, and that's not a place that you see every day. So let us Yala? wonder, where's the other Tutankhamun stuff? What John is saying? It's all right. it's all no, not our knot. The, 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 yeah, the, the bones. Yeah. The oh, oh. Porphyr, porphyring bones, too. Oh, yeah, they're porphyry bones. That's a bones. very good one. Yeah, that's a really good one. That's from Tutankhamun. Yeah. Is that Hatem's mouth? Who is that? Hatem's mouth. Who is that? Hatem. Oh, Hatem's mouth. Oh, well, all right. Yeah. 
That's how Mandel helped tap the first. Oh, okay. <laughs> And a faint you smile. You know what? If, the, uh, what is, yeah, if this guy said yes, <laughs> we're alone here with him. <laughs> I mean, you talk to him. I'm not talking. You take it. And then you can talk. <sighs> I don't have, I'll do that. I don't have a second. Oh, yeah. I, have I, I like that. <laughs> the thing that they, as a faint smile suggests the pleasant features of timeless kingship. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> timeless kingship, I think, would be a pain in the neck. You didn't necessarily have a smile on Well, you might in those days. Anyway, we go back to our friend Akhenaten here. And there's no way about it. He creeps me out. And that's all there is. It's mislabeled. But you know what's funny? They labeled this one and the other time somebody else. I mean, how did the first no, they said that, that, name. that is his name, but, but here. He changed. He changed his name, but this is how he's portrayed when he's Akhenaten and earlier. Uh, he was, I mean, how did the um, fourth and, he was and not, looked like and he was any of the kings you right, saw before? Right, he was not portrayed like this. So he was presented as the traditional way, like every king. I followed the, sa the same regimen of the ancients. Then he changed to his new ideas or what he believes in. Changed the city. The capital was changed to no Amarna. You see, yeah. the, the, the city. No flash. All right. Uh, so so this, the, the, there was no more luxury as capital. He changed it to Amarna in the middle of Egypt. Uh, uh, changed the, to Aten instead of Amun. And uh, the art style has been his own style, and we're going to see it very well uh, shown here. It shows exactly what his Amarna style is. More uh, roundier lines. Yeah, more, 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 realistic. more organic. Not yeah. really realistic, because it's just as stylized, yeah. but it's stylized in a different way. Also, actually, I didn't mention this when we're in the uh, not in the room. <coughs> There's a poem by Akhenaten, which is thought to be by him himself, nobody really knows, but that is almost word for word like one of the Psalms of David, which, oh, later, really? which is supposedly much later. Yeah, almost, and it's all about actually the, basically it's a, a hymn of praise to the, the good stuff of the earth, which is, I mean, this is what Akhenaten's uh, revival was. I mean, it was, it was certainly religious in its own way, but it wasn't spiritual. It's, it was really the manifestation of spirit, and of course the the Egyptian doctrine is not really quite like that. It's 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 really it's the it's the reverence for the for the spiritual the spiritual principles underlying the manifestation. And in fact, I've come to think about the ballpark again now, but you always see them. The good things of this earth are offerings that they give to the god. So it's not they're, not, they're not worshiping the offerings. The offerings are, are for the principle, and Akhenaten sort of turned that around, I figure, anyway. Yeah, so those are the blocks that were found in the pylon in Karnak, yeah? yeah? When it fell from the floods, when they opened the, 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 the opening, the girdle wall, the floods were high and put the walls down. So they found those in, and they are called the Talatat. Something to do with the way they're cut in trees, three sides. Oh, here yeah. you see actually a really good example of the of the of, of the sun's rays ending ending in hands. Here. So basically, it, yeah, the, the the sun is the, the sun is given is, it's handouts from the sun. Look. This is not and, spiritual. And, and they end up with onks and yeah. masses. Yeah. Okay. No more. Okay. What? Oh. Okay. No more photos. You don't have to say that. <laughs> all right, and look at the heads. Yeah, all those weird See? heads. Yeah, they all became a stylization of the style. There is, there is something here. It's more, more kind of work and line. See the goose that is eating and the goose that it's not very uh, strict line. Look at this man. He's uh, feeding the cow. Uh, work. There's a lot of work. That's a dog. Look, that's, that's, a dog. that's weighing. Where is your dog? No, that's, that's cow. A dog. That's a cow. So. These are cows. Those are cows. Yeah, where that's is not. it? 
That's the bottom. That's the bottom. It's it's it's, it's split. Oh, you're right. Yeah. John's right. That's a bowl, not a cow. <laughs> right. 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 You are. You're right. Yeah. They're weighing something and they're filling the jars. They look at the storage of the winery. The carpenter. I like. That's the jeweler. There is a man sifting. There is a man who's taking a break. That's an artist, or maybe the bookkeeper. You know, what is the man who's eating? Look at this man. The baker hands out. Oh, and, yeah, right. Yeah? Right. right. right? Um, what is the man? He's eating. I like him. Look at him. Oh, yeah. Oh, See yeah. the face? Yeah. <laughs> ah, he's happy with his little break. And he's having yeah, some radishes and very Egyptian meal until now. As they are planting in the ground. So there is, that's totally Amarna style. You don't really see, get to see this kind of movement. Because right. when we go to Saqqara, there will be work, but not in this not, yeah, much more lively, style, lively. Much lively. More style, like, yeah. Right. It still looks like Obama. What's that? Looks like Obama. <laughs> Obama? Obama. Yeah. Well, I bet. I bet. Yeah. I bet. Now, during his reign, was it? Look at this. I don't know enough about mm. the cycles of the processions. What's that? Oh. It's got all the symbolism on it. Oh. The car and the, everything. Oh, I never noticed it's that before. It's wow. really there is, I never noticed that. That's it's fantastic. It's yeah. Incredible. Yeah, you with the wing disc and the scarab in the middle. And, yeah, that's brilliant. Isn't it It's like one of those Italian It's fabulous. Yeah, that's wonderful. Never saw it. I never noticed it. A million times I've been here. What's it say? It's a priest of Montu. Priest of Montu? Anthropoid. It's usually later, but. So that's wonderful. Who was saying something? Somebody was saying something. Who's asking me something? Who's asking me something? So during his reign, it was an intermediate period between his between the two zodiac. Not really. No, no. It's 1300 or so. It might have been the end of a serious cycle, a Suffolk cycle. It might have been. But it could well have been. And. Thinking if, it's, if he's moving the capital physically halfway, mm -hmm. yeah, maybe exactly. there's another halfway, and he's, he's it could be. And it's this androgynous figure. There's a lot of ambiguity and halfway. And yeah, it could be. You know, it could well be a Suffolk cycle because let's see, it, just, it goes in around. No, the Southern cycle, that's not, that's not the equinoxes. The Southern cycle is one in 4240, and there's one in 2900. It's 1300 and something, 60 years is the Southern cycle. Might have been, might have been. Anyway, it's certainly bizarre, and it happens at one time in Egypt, and the only time. Very strange interlude, and the whole art style changes. It's really, I mean, you can see why why it's generated so many different different versions. Now we go into the Coptic. You can see why the classic guys got so pissed off. Yeah, oh yeah. That's a big change. Well, that's it, guys.